Now tell me, George has already passed the test. How would you change the bands on this? Well, I don't see anything that says band on it, but just kind of by instinct, I guess you would touch the frequency. Look at there. Okay, George, let's look at changing modes. Changing modes, well, let's see. What mode am I on now? SCW Reverse. LSB. Go ahead and hit it again. Look in the lower left-hand corner. DV. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm on HF. Yes, sir, you are. DV. Is that D-Star? Yes, sir. On HF? On HF, built in. One of the interesting things, you notice when I hit the top how this... Yeah. Well, I hope I don't take us out of focus on the other one. But on the bottom... Ah, okay. Oh, it's steady at the feet. Nice. Now, you can still tilt it over, but it's a lot harder to do so. Now, yeah, you've, got, you've got tuning steps on this, and you were talking about one indent. Mm -hmm. There's a one hertz tuning resolution on this. Wow. Any ideas on how to get to that? Well, uh, first off, I would just touch right there, but that didn't do it. There's a two, the second step to it. There you go. Hold down. The free tuning. Yeah. One hertz at a time. You notice there's a speaker on the back of it. Right, yeah, and so that means I don't have to necessarily have an external speaker on this thing if I've got the rig under the seat or, nope. or remotely located. There's also a jack for a key. Yeah, let's, let's look at the rear here. So it's just got a standard uh, RJ45 here Yes. As, as a remote head. RJ45 for the remote head and RJ45 for the microphone. Mm -hmm. You have a 3.5 millimeter for external speaker or headphones mm -hmm. and a 3.5 millimeter for your key. Now with, with the graphical display, there's some real cool things that they've done as well. The, the controls, some of the controls are touch screen, some of them are from the knobs on the side. So we want to use that mic gain that Bob Heil talks about setting for his headphones. That's the center adjustment. Now you can see it'll take forever to go from the low end to the high end just right. by turning. But if I make a snap change, the software knows to increment so and go faster. So it's looking at the velocity of the knob for coarse and then slow turning for fine tuning. 100 watts on HF and 6, 50 on 2, and I believe 35 on 440. So this is mic and RF power. Speed and pitch. Oh, that's for your CW. Yes. Preamp, that's an ATT, that's a preamp and attenuator. Yep, and then you got doctor mode. Doctor mode, I could always use oh, awesome. a little doctor. Uh-oh. Now Tommy's going to be familiar with what that DR mode is. The DR mode is actually the DR mode in D-Star. Where you can find the repeater. Yes. Okay. Now, with the repeater, you've got, it, it makes it easier for D-Star from where you're talking to to where you want to talk to. But the radio does not have GPS built into it. You can put an external GPS unit to it. And once you get your coordinates fed into it, it has the near repeater function just like on your 31. Nice. What is near repeater? Near repeater will take your GPS coordinates and tell you what D-Star repeaters are in your local area. But we'll go ahead and exit out of the DR mode. Set. Then your main set menu. So this, that's basically just all the default functionality for the radio. You pretty much set that for the most part and leave it. Yes. But it's grouped instead of like some of the radios out there that just has a huge laundry list of functions. This is grouped together based on what it it adjusts. Tone control. Tone control. This is one thing you do not have in your 7000 is your transmit tone control. And then it's grouped by SSB, AM, FM, as well as the digital voice. Hmm. And you can set your transmit bandwidth levels as well as the amount of bass and the amount of treble. We have on here the auto-tune, uh, there's two different tuners available for it. There's the AH4 for a whip or a long wire, or the AT180 for a coax-fed antenna. Some of the other third-party 
antenna tuners go off the antenna tune jack, that would be the same button that you would use there. I'm ready to give it the ultimate test here. Let's just go back to the uh, to the main screen here. 1910.70. There's one other thing I want to show you. On your 7000, you've got dual manual notches. Right. This one only has one. You can still change the width of it and you can tune where it's going to be. Mm -hmm. But you've only got one single notch filter. Okay. So my 7000 still has at, at least one thing. It's still a real box. cool box. Oh, it is. And I. Uh, I have been tickled to death with it. And for all those that are questioning, is this replacing it? No, it's not. One thing we haven't talked about yet was the back of the rig. Yeah. That's now, a lot of connectors, right? There's a couple of them that I'd call magical connections. This one right here. USB. It's mini a USB. mini USB port. That does the audio as well as rig control. Same as uh, 7200 then. Different, different connection form, but same concept. Mm -hmm. Another microphone connection, so you can either put it to the head of the radio or to the body. Mm -hmm. We have a, a data jack for packet or digital mode uh, operation on VHF and UHF. The accessory port where you can use for your different data modes. But what a lot of people are doing is going back to that one with the sound card built into it. You just use your sound card modes. Now, we didn't really see this before, but this is an SD card slot. What all can you do with that? Oh, that opens up a whole new world. So you put an external GPS unit on it. You can have the radio breadcrumb and save your path for your GPS logger. Mm -hmm. Your memory channels, your memory settings, your digital voice gear. Also a, a digital voice recorder on it as well. Oh, yeah. so it will do that? Yes. 